Woodson Center. We're honored to have him on tonight. Mr. Woodson, thanks so much for coming on. I see, I see a theme here, and it's not just Lori Lightfoot. It's many big city mayors and even smaller city mayors. As the problems they face become more complex and harder to solve, their solutions seem to become more frivolous and more disconnected from reality. Have you noticed this? Absolutely. And what they're doing is falsely claiming that the failures of the last 60 years and most urban centers all over the country have been run by liberal Democrats, many of them veterans of the civil rights movement who moved from politics, I mean, from the civil rights to run these cities. They also had uh, to spend about $22 trillion on poverty money in these cities. And, and as a consequence, all of these inequities that they are talking about have been done on their watch. And so as conditions and spending went up, as conditions deteriorated, but rather than address the, the reality of what they do is they point to institutional racism or factors that exempts them from any responsibility for uh, taking care of these problems. And now the, the white left is coming in and exploiting this, this disparity and using it to really decimate this country and the collateral damage and is are the lives of poor blacks in these cities because what the left is doing is vilifying the police as 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 agents of white supremacy and the more they are the less aggressive they are about enforcing laws the more the rate the murder rate rises what black low income blacks are facing is not bigotry or institutional racism it is systematic neglect and abandonment and treasonous behavior. Bigotry is not their biggest challenge. It's treason. What is happening in these cities is it's a difference, uh, Tucker, between a burglar steals what's in your house and an embezzler that steals everything you've accumulated over a lifetime. And what black America is being uh, stolen is their history of how they resisted and overcame oppression and that's being wiped away. Chicago used to be the black, the black Wall Street in segregation. In 1929, there were 731 black-owned businesses. There were 100 million in real estate assets at a time when, when segregation was the law. And so you can't blame institutional racism or systematic racism or, or the legacy of slavery for the failures. These are, this has occurred precisely uh, as the civil rights leaders became leaders of these cities. So Lori Lightfoot would tell you, and, and again, it's not just Lori Lightfoot by a mile, it's, so, it's virtually every one of these mayors, that she cares so deeply about the poorest people in her city. Should we believe that? Absolutely not. I mean, and, and I believe, Tucker, that the salvation of this country may sound odd are going to be that sleeping giant when low-income blacks wake up and realize that they're being bamboozled and hustled and scammed by people like Lori Lightfoot and others. They are going to realize that the, they must address the enemy within because the left derives this moral authority as being the legitimate representatives of the poor. A metaphor for that occurred in Oregon when a, a black police officer was talking to two young black demonstrators and a white demonstrator interposed herself in between and said, F the police. And this, so that's a metaphor for how whites are exploiting that. But one day there's evidence that that sleeping giant, that low income leaders around the country are, are, are recognizing this as in Washington, an uh, 11 year old killed Tucker on 4th of July, and the people demonstrated internally and said, no justice, no sleep. And they picketed and made noise until the killers were turned in.